Welcome to Invest in America Business Tools and Resources. We'll be starting shortly. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Invest in America Business Tools and Resources. A few housekeeping things before we hop into the webinar. If you have a question, please type it into the Q&A. The U.S. Small Business Administration does not endorse Public Private Strategies Institute. This session is being live streamed and recorded. And please do not share any personal information in the Q&A function. And a quick thank you to our partners for the Invest in America webinar series. We really appreciate you and we're so grateful that you're here. I now have the honor to introduce Senior Advisor Renee Johnson. Hello, my name is Renee Johnson and I'm a Senior Advisor here at Public Private Strategies Institute. Let's go on to that first slide. We are so excited to have each of you here today for the U.S. Small Business Administration webinar series, Invest in America, Small Business Tools and Resources. This webinar, we're going to get to a few things where we're going to highlight steps you can take to learn how uh, to take advantage of existing programs, uh, updates regarding programs and recent policy announcements, and a discussion of important and timely policy issues. Let's go to the next slide. So you're going to hear an update from uh, the administration, resources to help your businesses, and then additional resources and information from the Invest in America plan. Now, without further ado, today we'll be celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month and sharing cybersecurity resources that may be helpful to your small businesses. Now I have the honor to introduce Sol Ortega, Senior Advisor for Public Engagement at the White House. Sol Ortega was born in Lima, Peru, and raised in Kissimmee, Florida. She is a first-generation college student and holds a BA in political science with a minor in Spanish and Latin American studies from the University of Florida. Sol knows firsthand how decisions made in Washington can impact communities like hers. Sol has a strong legislative background, having worked in Congress for five years. She has served as the Deputy Director of Engagement for Senate Democratic Leader Charles Schumer. In her role, she served as a liaison for the Congressional Hispanic Caucus and various national advocacy groups and the leader's office elevating the voices of underrepresented communities. Prior to the Senate, she worked in the House of Representatives for Congressman Darren Soto, Florida number nine district. Most recently, she is serving uh, as the deputy director for Latino engagement for building back together, working to promote President Biden's legislative agenda with national and local Latino groups. And without further ado, I present to you Sol Ortega. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm very excited to be here and um, happy Hispanic Heritage Month to everybody. Um, and thank you, Renee, and thank you for this team for putting this webinar together. Um, like Renee mentioned, my name is Sol Ortega, and I am a senior advisor for public engagement here in the White House. Um, for those who are not familiar with our office, the Office of Public Engagement supports the president's goal of building a government that is inclusive, transparent, accountable, and responsible to its citizens. We are comprised of liaisons who handle specific constituencies and work to promote the historic, the, the historic work the administration has done, and in particularly in my case, working on um, uplifting that work within the Latino community. Our goal year around, and not only during Hispanic Heritage Month, is to bridge is to be the bridge between our constituencies and the Biden Harris administration. We work to create and maintain a two way dialogue that ensures voices are heard and the concerns are translated into action. 
Since the administration came into office, we have accomplished historic wins for the Latino community. Through the American Rescue Plan, Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, the Chips and Science Act, and the Inflation Reduction Act, plus two executive orders on racial equity, the Biden-Harris administration has and will continue to invest in the future of, of the Latino community. For example, with these investments, we began reversing decades of infrastructure disinvestment in communities of color, including with four including $4 billion to reconnect communities that were previously cut off from economic opportunities by transportation infrastructure, and to help advance transportation projects in disadvantaged and underserved communities. We also began closing the digital divide for Latino families with funding and commitment to connect every person in America to reliable, affordable, high-speed internet by 2030, considering that over a third of Latino households report having, not having high-speed internet at home. We've also delivered the largest investments in tackling legacy pollution in American history, which disproportionately impacts communities of color. We have also secured $130 billion, the largest investment in public education in history, to help students get back to school and recover academically in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic. We have also canceled $117 billion in student loan debt cancellation for more than 3.4 million borrowers. We've also increased Latino enrollment in healthcare, in healthcare coverage by 900,000 or 53% from 2020 to 2022 by helping more Latinos gain health insurance through the Affordable Care Act than ever before. We have also created 13 million jobs resulting in 40% drop in Hispanic unemployment and have supported Latino small businesses by increasing access to capital, leading to Latinos starting new businesses at the fastest rate in over 10 years. Administrator Guzman um, recently highlighted the historic increase in loans to Latino-owned businesses under the Biden-Harris administration that have attributed to more than 5 million Latino-owned businesses to generate over $800 billion to the economy every year. So that, SBA has also taken significant steps aligned with the president's investing in America agenda, to increase access to its core capital programs, including among Latino entrepreneurs. Some of these include launching the Biden-Harris administration's cross-country Latino prosperity tour, deploying the $100 million of community navigator pilot program funded under, the Biden, uh, under President Biden's American Rescue Plan. Um, they've also more than tripled the number of women business centers at Hispanic serving institutions, and finally, have implemented new reforms to address persistent capital access gaps. All of these investments and initiatives are part of Bidenomics, and we have we can see it every day that it's delivering for the American people and specifically delivering also for the Latino community. Although we've already accomplished so much, we acknowledge that there's still a lot more work to be done. As we continue to strive to invest in our communities, we need your partnership to ensure that communities know of the work that is being done and can have access to all of the resources available to them. Before I close out, I also wanna highlight another key priority for the administration that is in line with um, the, the goal for this, this call today. Um, as we work to create these new jobs and increase representation across all sectors, we also need to be, um, we also are focusing on growing and enhancing the cyber workforce. By engaging all Americans, including the Latino community, as well as other underserved communities. Cyber skills are needed in every industry sector and affect all facets of society. Therefore, we must have a workforce that reflects the American population to effectively build and protect our digital systems. We cannot leave any community behind, including those historically underrepresented in the cyber workforce. The Biden-Harris administration recently released a national cyber workforce education strategy which charts a course for providing all Americans with the cyber skills needed to access good paying jobs. In August, the Biden-Harris administration participated in a regional cyber workforce summit focused on expanding access to good paying jobs, middle class jobs at the University of um, Nevada, Las Vegas, which is a minority serving institution and also a Hispanic serving institution. Um, what was great about this event is that it provided an opportunity for multiple significant commitments to address the national security imperatives to grow the cyber workforce and to increase access for all, including the Latino community through education, training, and career pathways. It also allowed an educational institution, the educational institution, to expand their enrollment numbers to high school students in Nevada, 
particularly over half of the current cybersecurity student population from Nevada, were coming in from traditionally underserved populations and identified as first generation students. Um, there were also many companies and organizations who committed to increasing access to underrepresented and underserved communities, both in Nevada and across the country, as a means of increasing the, 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 and diversifying the cyber workforce. Um, if your employer, um, worker, student, or government entity, and you want to access um, this national cyber, cyber and workforce education strategy, um, there are several um, guidance sheets and resources that we can share with you all. I'll make sure um, to share with um, this team, but it's basically, you can go to www.whitehouse.gov slash cyber workforce. Um, and that, that is it for my presentation, for my remarks today. I hope that this can be a start of a continued partnership with all of you today, that you can see our office as a resource for the work that you're doing day in and day out. I wanna thank Public Private Strategies for working on the, with the administration to create this webinar series to provide you all with the tools and resources to thrive in your everyday work. Thank you all again for having me today. Thank you so much, Sol, for all that great information. Uh, and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with us today. I would like to introduce our next speaker, the amazing Associate Administrator, Mark Madrid. Mr. Madrid has been selected to serve as the Associate Administrator for the Office's of Entrepreneurial Development, also known as OED, at the U.S. Small Business Administration. In this role, Mr. Madrid leads OED, which is the SBA's technical assistant arm with a national resource network, including small business development centers, also known as SBDCs, women's business centers, known as WBCs, SCORE, and the Office of Entrepreneurship Education. Previously, Mr. Madrid, as he served as CEO of Latino Business Action Network, a national 501c3 organization focused on strengthening America through funding and supporting US Latino entrepreneurial research and education impact programs at Stanford University. Mr. Madrid was named the 2019 Silicon Valley Nonprofit CEO of the Year by the Silicon Valley Business Journal. And he served on the board of trustees for Scholarship America, the leading nonprofit scholarship and educational support organization in the United States. And he's also an honorary colonel of the United States Army and Jefferson Award recipient. So please, please, please help me welcome Associate Administrator, the most amazing Mr. Mark Major. Thank you, remarkable Renee. Wouldn't be here without you. And thank you to our SBA administrator, Isabella Casillas Guzman, Public Private Strategies Institute, colleagues of the SBA, and of course, our Office of Public Engagement for this opportunity. And I'd like to thank our ASL interpreters as well. Uh, most importantly, thank you to our resilient small business owners joining us from across the country and those who provide services to them. Small businesses are truly the giants of our economy. And happy Hispanic Heritage Month to all. First, let's talk about opportunities. And then we're gonna talk about some challenges. But opportunities with President Biden's Invest in America, we are investing in critical industries and infrastructure, investing in people and places, strengthening supply chains, shaping markets to be fair and competitive, overcoming barriers to scaling production. But we are here, frankly, also to talk about the challenges, the challenges to be super mindful of, in this case, cybersecurity, meaning that you are protected from cyber criminals, hacks, and malicious actions that can have most destructive effects. Now, I know I'm between you and the actual turnkey resources that are no cost, so I'm going to be short of wind and full of heart. And what I mean by full of heart is I just visited with a small business just an hour ago for lunch, and they shared with me how they were hacked and how it nearly took their business down. Their management service provider, MSP, all of a sudden was not available. And so what was at risk was all the client data that this small business had accumulated in their business in private, and it was all of a sudden vulnerable. Uh, literally, this gentleman said, you know, I had a rapid heartbeat. It was that bad. I didn't know if I was going to have to close down. And most importantly, I was concerned about my clients. That is hashtag truth right there. That is what we're dealing with. So 
at the SBA, cybersecurity, we take it very, very seriously under Administrator Guzman's charge. So what are we doing about it? First of all, I'm honored to lead with a strong team, our cybersecurity pilot program for small businesses. We have three grantees that were awarded in 2022, the Arkansas Forge Institute, the State of Maryland Department of Commerce, and South Dakota University, Dakota State University in the state of South Dakota, of course. And we have our 23 uh, grantees, Old Dominion University, the University of Wyoming, the State of Hawaii Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, Ohio State University, and the Colorado Office of Economic Development and International Trade. You can find all about these grantees at sba.gov. But what are the, some of the services that these organizations and grantees are providing to small businesses? It's automation of risk management frameworks. It's support in achieving and maintaining cybersecurity compliance and approvals. Development of cybersecurity policies, procedures, and the business security team's responsibilities and potential technology needs. It's about technical assessment of the entity's information systems online and in-person training for employees on Wi-Fi software and hardware upgrades. It's about penetration testing designed to qualify the enhancements of security. Even about CMMC certification for those procuring with the federal government. It's even about creation of processes and procedures to maintain or resume essential functions in the event of a disruption. That's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. It's a lot to be mindful of. I can Try, I can only try to empathize with you all. You have so much to worry about with running your business. And then there's cybersecurity on top of that. But we wanna come in and reinforce you and be there for you when it comes to cybersecurity, cyber hygiene, cyber assessments. And I am so excited that this office uh, and the agency that we're hosting our second annual cybersecurity summit during October, Cyber National Cyber Awareness Month, so you can register uh, for this multi-day event um, at sba.gov slash cybersecurity. SBA, like Small Business Administration, sba.gov slash cybersecurity. We'll have two, at least two sessions projected in October during National Cyber Awareness Month. And of course, we have our wonderful SBA resource partners, including our strong and institutionalized small business development centers across America. You know, there's 63 lead centers and over 900 service centers that comprise the Small Business Development Network. And one of their specialties among many is cybersecurity. We're delighted to have Jake here from, uh, that represents the North Star platform that was developed under the SBDC footprint. All you're gonna hear about is rich material in 10 minutes. Isn't that wonderful? In 10 minutes, you can walk away with no cost resources that are turnkey and ready to go to provide you turnkey tools, solutions, and oh, you can breathe. You can breathe to know that there's something out there for you. And that's where I wanna to close today. That during these times, before you think about a potential opportunity, you have to make sure that you're secure. Uh, if you're digitizing, if you're exporting, if you're diversifying your product line, uh, if you're transforming from B2B to B2C or B2C to B2B, you have to be cyber secure. So with that said, it is the highest honor imaginable to serve you and to serve those who are serving you as well so that we can make sure that you're cyber secure. Sometimes we use that word cyber security, but we're not internalizing it. At least I'm not. It's being secure from cyber threats. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you, Associate Administrator Mark Madrid. And I love that uh, being secure in your cyber. We're gonna use that from now on. Now we're gonna hear from the most amazing Jacob Blackston. Jacob Blackston, or also known as Jake, is a University of Delaware graduate and holds three master's degrees. I thought I had a lot, but he has taken the cake, an MBA, an MS in cybersecurity, and an MS in business analytics uh, and technology management. Returning to Delaware after serving as a digital forensic investigator in the Manhattan NYC office uh, and Aon Company, a global risk management firm specializing in cybersecurity, Jacob is skilled in a range of software and hardware platforms and the measures in which to secure them. 
with expertise in cybersecurity, database management, digital marketing, and finance, Jacob is passionate about technology. He holds two SANS GIAC, and I'm sorry, I don't know if that's supposed to be the acronym, certifications in both digital and forensics and security essentials, and uses them to help protect small businesses as digital solutions manager for the Delaware Small Business Development Center. And without further ado, the most amazing, the dynamic, the guru of cybersecurity, Hi, everyone. So thank you for that awesome introduction. I would not claim to be a, a guru. Uh, we often claim that uh, we're never cyber experts. We're just more cyber secure than we were yesterday. Uh, so with that being said, I want to talk about a little bit on what the America's SBDC and what uh, our small business development centers do in general. So America's SBDC decided one, not one day, we realized uh, about six or seven years ago that all of our small businesses were becoming online. We were seeing online stores. We were seeing websites go up. Uh, we were seeing more and more mobile apps being developed that we realized that security wasn't just a physical problem anymore. It was more digital than anything else. Our identities, our banking, everything stays online now and nothing is ever deleted. I learned that uh, in New York as a forensics investigator. Nothing is ever deleted, whether or not you think it is. With that being said, America's SVDC, along with the Small Business Development Center Network, decided that we should really have a standardized cybersecurity program. And so with that, you can go on to the next slide. Uh, we developed a, this program called the North Star. And basically the America's SVDC, along with your small business development center networks that Mark Madrid actually talked about. We have 62 uh, centers across the nation. Uh, actually, we have more than 62, but they're in all 50 states plus our territories, and they're spread across all throughout the nation. We provide one-on-one -on -one consulting, uh, training classes, and other resource connections. Our primary focus is when the initial SVDCs were developed were financial management, strategic planning, operations efficiencies, marketing and, and technology applications, more or less like inventory tracking and, and more the, the software based things. But then as we grew, we realized that we needed to offer one thing that seemed to be missing as our technology innovation expanded, and that was uh, cybersecurity. So we all got together as states that had started cybersecurity programs. Colorado was already called out, uh, Michigan and uh, South Carolina, Florida, all of these, Oregon, all of these different states that decided to jump on board in cybersecurity relatively early on, decided that we needed to develop a, a standardized program to help our small businesses in this area that seemed to be lacking. So next slide for me. So the North Star program was born. And basically our mission is to provide cybersecurity education for everyone, not just uh, small businesses, but small businesses and other SBDCs and other states that need that extra support and extra education. We realize that, like we already mentioned, the workforce in cybersecurity is kind of dwelling far behind what we actually need because computers are advancing at a, at a rate that's exponential. So we need people, our workforce, and our small businesses to be supported in that way. So the North Star mission is to provide a cybersecurity education to all as easily as possible. All resources programming is all designed with the small business and our small business advisors in our SBDCs in mind. So the next slide. So with that, the North Star service provides outbound cybersecurity awareness campaigns. So it is basically our, uh, our delivery mechanism for cybersecurity education. So anything branded as North Star has been vetted by our small business administration uh, and I'm sorry, small business development centers. And what we do there is basically determine what resources are good for our small businesses and what res uh, resources aren't. What are the ones that small businesses are using that are most appropriate and which ones aren't? Uh, we host both national and local events, so we provide events for both just specific to your state and your state laws, 
and also national ones uh, in cover basic cyber hygiene and, and the like. We provide training programs for both uh, small business clients as well as consultants. We do internal SBDC resources. So a lot of our SBDCs that may not be as cyber ready as others, we provide those type of trainings as well and standardized bases, uh, based certifications and assessment tools. So we didn't make up uh, our own framework for cybersecurity. Uh, we actually pulled from very substantial ones that already existed and we just drilled them down to make it more digestible. So as Mark Madrid was talking earlier, it might have, if you're not a cybersecurity expert, which most small businesses aren't, uh, all of that assessment tools and all of those things that you thought uh, probably were a little confusing to you. And that's why this, this North Star program was born is to try to demystify a lot of that. And we kind of gotten away from the term cybersecurity because it is a very daunting term. And we think more on the realm of identity protection and data protection, because everyone knows what that is. You collect data, everyone knows data. So we really focus on just the protection of data and your identity. Uh, so that way it's a little less scary from cybersecurity. Next slide. So the North Star service coverage is actually, uh, we, we broke it up into four different sections. So that way we can actually help deliver more specialized training. So we have it on our west uh, area is uh, Jim Devers. We have our Midwest, which is, which is Scott Tabor, our South, which is Brent Hoover, and then East, which is Candace Pruitt. Uh, and then they cover this, the states that are in their certain network. And we have over a thousand offices across the US and its territories. And our task force here at the ASBDC is just designed to create resources as they come up and as you need them as small businesses. Next slide. So we often get the question, cybersecurity is not for us. We're too small. It doesn't matter to us. Uh, we're too small. No one's gonna look at us. Uh, majority of uh, the entire economy is made up of small businesses and they're all you. Uh, and small businesses are unfortunately the, path of least resistance for attackers. You are the, the weakest link, unfortunately, into larger organizations. So all those partnerships that you do, all those service contracts, all of those government contracts that you might have, you unfortunately are the weakest link because you might not be able to protect yourself as high, as, as costly or as highly as others can. So, and attackers know that. And so what we try to kind of convey to our small businesses is you're not too small to be hacked. Uh, your employees are your weakest link within an organization. Uh, most attacks today and most data breaches that occur are done by a human intervention. I, uh, an employee clicked on a link that they weren't supposed to, an employee clicked on an attachment, an employee fell for uh, a fake phone call or text message. An employee did something. So employee training is one of the biggest things that we advocate in our whole North Stars uh, program, because that is going to help you for majority of what it is that we're trying to protect. Next slide. And so when securing your devices, we just, so the small business uh, North Star initiative is all about making sure you've updated your stuff, making sure that you encrypt your data and it's not just out there readily available for anyone. Uh, install antivirus and anti-malware and those protections that are in place for both mobile devices and your laptops, uh, Macs included. Uh, backups, making sure that you have regular backups to in case you do have a data breach, you can return back to. Employee training I already mentioned and then uh, uh, multi-factor authentication. That annoying code that everyone gets, uh, that everyone is complaining that this is just an extra step to log in, trust me, it is useful and there's a reason why all of your banking sites and all of them use it now because it is that extra layer of protection for you and your small business. Next slide. So consultants are, if you're a small business consultant or a small business that is looking to get help, uh, small business development centers across the country are now having cybersecurity education for their consultants where we provide one-on-one -on -one consultants for both you and your small business at no cost. That's how the small business development centers operate. Uh, 
uh, where everything is free of charge. We have basic cybersecurity awareness programs. We have recommendations for improvements in your systems. We have connections with professional resources and we have low stress, non-technical education as well. So if it sounds like it's too much, then please reach out to us because we can try our hardest to make it sound as less technical as possible. So it's a little bit more digestible. Next slide. And so all of our downloadable tools are available at the link that has been on all my slides. It's americasspdc.org slash cybersecurity. We have uh, cybersecurity do's and don'ts. We have one pages on ransomware. We have cyber policies out there. We have cyber resources, which is a list of tools that are in different areas. So virtual private networks, authentication apps, file backups. We have software recommendations for all of that. We detail what critical information means, uh, and we're actually ex ever expanding. So we are, since it's almost October, in October, we will be not only participating in the SBA Cyber Summit, but also unveiling a lot of new resources and videos on this website to go along with everything that we have talked about already today. So be on the lookout for our resources. Next slide. And so our training programs, we have videos and presentations already existing on our website as well. But in addition to that, we have standard, all of our cybersecurity education is standard based uh, by NIST, CMMC, and uh, all of the other standards out there. They're self-paced, they're topicals for di discussion, they're timely topics. So as they come up and as we see them, we try to educate as promptly as possible. Again, we, they're non-technical language and they work uh, by with one pager downloads or video presentations, all that live in one stop shop. And all you have to do is ask, if you don't see a resource, we are going to make sure that we get you one as soon as possible. Next slide. So I just wanted to kind of highlight all of the resource connections. So a lot of our material comes from NIST, Homeland Security, Federal Trade Commissions, the National Cybersecurity Alliance, and the SBA itself. So we distill all of that information down to digestible information for you as a small business. So on a local, regional, and national level. Next slide. So I, I know that's a lot, and I thank you all for, for sticking with me, but please allow the SBDCs and America's SPDC and the North Star program to help you navigate these waters. We are here to make sure make your lives easier, not harder. So please utilize your SPDC uh, and utilize our America's North Star brand content. Thank you so much, Jay. That was a lot of great information. And we want to make sure that everybody uh, gets a copy of it. So I know there are some comments. I see it in the chat or the Q&A rather that say, hey, I want to know how can I ensure that I get a copy of this? This is some great resources. Um, we will make sure that you guys have a copy of this presentation uh, after this webinar. And also this is being live streamed to the Facebook pages of PPSI and to the SBA. So you can check this out on Facebook uh, and watch it again there as well. Uh, so now we're going to go into talking about additional resources from the Investing in America plan. Now, what is Investing in America uh, and how does this impact your business? Well, the Invest in America agenda is rebuilding the economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. As a result of the historic legislation passed by, and that is including the American Rescue Plan, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, also known as the Bill, B-I-L, CHIPS and Science Act, and the Inflation Reduction Act, also known as the IRA, it impacts small businesses in numerous ways. And this is just only a few ways that we have listed. But one, it's an initiative to drive investment to, to the United States economy. It promotes domestic and foreign investments across various sectors, aims to strengthen economic growth, job creation, and competitiveness, provides resources and incentives to attract investments, Support sustainable development and long term economic prosperity, creates opportunities for businesses, entrepreneurs, and communities, as well as builds a thriving and resilient economy for all Americans. 
So again, there is essentially four bills, the American Rescue Plan, ARP, Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, Bill, Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, and the Chips and Science Act that are all part of the uh, Investing in America Plan. Now we're gonna break them all down one by one. So the American Rescue Plan is a comprehensive economic stimulus package that was signed into law in March 11th, 2021. Uh, this historic legislation provided 1.9 trillion in funding to address the ongoing challenges and the impacts of COVID-19. Uh, the key provisions of the American Rescue Plan included direct payments to individuals and family, expanded unemployment benefits, support for small businesses, funding for vaccine distributions, aid to state and local uh, tribal governments and investments in education, healthcare, and infrastructure. The plan aimed to accelerate the nation's recovery, create jobs, support vulnerable communities, and provide relief to those most affected by the pandemic. Uh, it was a broad range of incentives uh, and initiatives, and the ARP uh, sought to revitalize the economy, promote equity, and ensure a brighter future for all Americans. And if you wanted to see more resources about exclusively how the ARP can help your business, when we send this out to you, you can click on this link and I'll direct you to a uh, page for you to find more resources for your business. Next slide, please. We're going to specifically focus, though, on the ARP's Community Navigator pilot program uh, that was directed to the SBA. It provided $100 million in grant funding awarded to organizations in all 50 states and Puerto Rico. It closed resource gaps for small businesses that were in underserved communities. And basically, it provided hub organizations with established ties to their local communities. Uh, and it priorly focused on socially and economically disadvantaged small businesses, uh, rural communities, women, and veterans. And basically, what you could do is go to sba.gov. Uh, in the tool search bar, you can click, click Community Navigator. And you can find a community navigator in your community to find resources to help you with your business. But also, again, when we send this out, you'll be able to click on this link and be directly connected to that plan as well. The State Small Business Credit Initiative. Now, this is also known as the SSBCI. Uh, this provided $10 billion to support small businesses and empower them to access the capital needed to invest in job creating opportunities as the country emerged from the pandemic. The SSBCI provided funds directly to states and the District of Columbia, territories and tribal governments and promote American entrepreneurship, support small business ownership and democratize access to capital across the country, including in underserved communities. Uh, this was a Department of Treasury program, and to find out more, you can go to the Department of Tre Treasury's website and search SSBCI or the State Small Business Credit Initiative, and again, we'll make sure that you have this presentation and you'll be able to click the link to find more resources and get connected to your jurisdiction to find out how you could be eligible for those funds. Additional. Uh, historic investments in support for small businesses were the Emergency Capital Investment Program, which is the ECIP. Uh, the Treasury closed and funded approximately $8.338 billion in investments in 2022. Uh, it supported community financial institutions like CDFIs, MDIs. So if you were in your local communities and were connected to those, they were able to have additional funding. Uh, it provided loans, grants, and assistance to small businesses and minority-owned businesses, uh, focused on low-income and financially underserved communities. And again, you'll be able to click on that link, or you can just search Emergency Capital Investment Program, ECIP. Uh, additionally, the wide range of investments made by, by uh, CDFI funds, uh, $5 billion in new market tax credit allocations were provided. 355 million under the bond guarantee program, 
and then 580 million in other grant programs were also made available to you. And then we have a link so that you'll be able to see some of those resources and how you'll be eligible for them for your business too. Now we're gonna talk about the bipartisan infrastructure law. So this is also known as the bill. And in 2021, uh, the infrastructure law, which is also known as the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act was signed into law. And it was a historic investment of over 550 billion in new funds for large inf infrastructure projects, supply chains, broadband and drinking water. This is one of the largest investments to infrastructure in our country. Uh, it expanded government contracts for small businesses, which is a historical struggle of small businesses to compete for and win government contracts. Uh, the law included a procurement effort to support small businesses with $37 billion through the U.S. Department of Transportation. Uh, so definitely check out the Department of Transportation's website to, to learn more about those resources. Uh, it empowered the Minority Business Development Agency, also known as MBDA, where it codified and made the agency permanent uh, and elevated its director to have a um, permanent position there. Uh, and you can find out more at mbda.gov. And then additionally, creating good paying jobs. The investments in the infrastructure uh, bill led to uh, job creations, and it's going to stimulate employment not only in construction, but broadband and other related industries uh, that this country so needs. Uh, and you can also go to build.gov, builduplocal.org, invest.gov, and internetforall.gov to find opportunities for your business to engage as well. Next slide, please. The Inflation Reduction Act, also known as the IRA, uh, was signed into law in 2022, signaling a monumental step in addressing climate change uh, and clean energy solidified American leadership and spurred innovation to lower costs and advance the global clean energy economy. Uh, the IRA, with its $370 billion investments, uh, aligns with President Biden's vision to establish the United States as a global leader in clean energy. By reducing energy expenses, promoting private investments, strengthening supply chains, and generating employment opportunities, this act paves the way for a better America powered by American workers. Next slide, please. So there are many things that happened out of the IRA specifically, uh, and it designed to support small businesses during uh, inflation, provides relief and assistance to mitigate the impact of rising costs, help businesses maintain affordability and competitiveness. And also one thing I wanna make sure I highlight is provide tax breaks and incentives for business growth and investments. Um, if you go to a few of these sites, one, again, we're sending this out so you can just click the links. But before then, if you wanted to just take a quick Google, if you Google Justice 40 initiative, uh, this is under the EPA and has opportunities for your business to do clean energy projects, supporting U.S. supply chains across clean energy technologies is another project with the EPA uh, and also Department of Energy. Doubling the research and development R&D tax credit for small businesses is part of the uh, Department of Treasury and how you're able to get some sort of credit there too for your business. Invest in America Clean Energy, uh, that's an opportunity for your business there. And then also you can download a list of Inflation Reduction Act funding programs in the guidebook. And so if you wanted to just Google that right now and just, you know, if you're trying to get ahead of the game, you could do so. Uh, but you can definitely look at these resources to find opportunities to engage in this regarding the Inflation Reduction Act uh, for your business. Next slide. Now, the Chips and Science Act, also known as CHIPS, uh, stands for creating helpful incentives to produce semiconductors and strengthening America's strategic national security science act. 
This legislation aims to address critical challenges in the semiconductor industry and advance scientific research and development in the United States. The CHIPS component focuses on incentivizing domestic semiconductor manufacturing, promoting supply chain resilience, and reducing dependence on foreign sources. The science component supports strategic scientific research and development, particularly in areas such as artificial intelligence, also known as AI, quantum computing, and advanced manufacturing. Next slide, please. So here are some opportunities regarding the Chips and Science Act. So one, spurring the small business growth, growth excuse me, uh, the Chips and Science Act um, has catalyzed significant investment in American semiconducting conductor manufacturing. Uh, and to date, companies have announced nearly $50 billion in additional investments, bringing the total business investment to nearly $150 billion. Small business opportunities. The Chips and Science Act ensures semiconductor incentives support equitable economic growth and development. Recipients of funding must demonstrate significant investments in workers and communities, including opportunities for small businesses. Uh, the act will unlock opportunities in science and technology for historically underserved communities as well. And for more information about how you can engage and have your business connect, just go to chips.gov. This is part of the Department of Commerce, uh, but they have a site dedicated to how you can learn more about engaging and getting your business um, active with the semiconductor sphere. And again, that's chips.gov. Next slide, please. And also there's templates to accompany um, incentives and how to do so. There's also notice of funding opportunities that are up and tools to help you. Uh, so make sure that you visit that. And then also to learn more about CHIPS, please also go to nist.gov backslash CHIPS to find out more as well. Next slide. So we're going to talk about Small Business Administration, the SBA, uh, some of their resources um, for access to capital and improving agency services and coordination uh, so that you are able to access their services for your business. So SBA funding programs. So the SBA has loans, investment capital programs, disaster relief, surety bonds, and then grants. Um, for loans, you could start or expand your business with loans guaranteed by the Small Business Administration. Uh, investment capital, you can find an investor for your business. Uh, investors make both debt and equity investments. And then for disaster relief, you can get help after a disaster uh, with low interest disaster loans from the Small Business Administration. Surety bonds, protect your work and your client with an SBA guaranteed surety bond. And grants are exactly what you think. Look for government grants that help businesses do scientific research and development. Next slide. So there's three types of loans that essentially you can uh, seek through the SBA. One is the 7A loan. Uh, it's a group of loans which guarantee portions of the total amount, the cap interest rates, and limit fees. Uh, once you've decided to apply for a loan guaranteed by the SBA, you need to collect the appropriate documents for your application, uh, then start the process by working with your local lender with the SBA guidelines. Uh, then there's the 504, which is a long-term fixed rate financing to purchase or repair real estate, equipment, machinery, or other assets. These 504 loans are available exclusively through certified development companies or CDCs. Uh, and you can go to the SBA's website to find a CDC in your area to ensure you're dealing with a qualified lender. Make sure it's on the uh, CDC list through the SBA uh, to ensure that you are, are getting the right person for a 504 loan. Uh, and then finally, if we can go back one, uh, the micro loans, the smallest loan program providing 50,000 or less to help businesses start up and expand. 
micro loans are available through certain nonprofit community based organizations that are experienced in lending and business management assistance. Uh, individual requirements will vary depending on the lender. And also, if you go through your community navigator, they'll be able to help you walk through those steps as well. Next slide, please. And then also there's lender match, which connects you to lenders by getting matched to potential lenders offering SBA backed loans. So using lender match, it does not guarantee that you'll get matched or be offered a loan. Um, you'll ask lenders about their interest rates, minimum credit score, cash flow requirements, and other qualifying factors. Lender Match submits loan requests to participating community development financial institutions uh, and small asset lenders. So those are CDFIs and NDIs. Uh, and then from there, uh, you'll be hopefully matched to a lender that can help and provide you assistance. Uh, and if you want to find out more about that, go to sba.gov backslash lender match. Next slide, please. Uh, for investment capital, find an investor for your business through a small business investment company, which is known as an SBIC, licensed by the Small Business Administration. An SBIC is a privately owned company that's licensed and regulated by the SBA. Uh, they invest as small businesses in the form of debt and equity. And the SBA doesn't invest directly to the small businesses, but it does provide funding to qualified SBICs with expertise in certain sectors or industries. Those experts then use their private funds along with SBA guaranteed funding to invest in those businesses. And so as you see with the illustration, there's private funders uh, and then the SBA, they go into the aspect and then they provide funding to the small businesses. And to find out more information about SBIC, just go to the SBA's website uh, and click on SBIC. Next slide, please. Surety bonds. Surety bonds help businesses win contracts by uh, providing the customer with a guarantee that the work will be completed. So many public and private contracts require the surety bonds, which are offered by surety companies. Uh, the SBA does this as well uh, for surety companies, which allows the companies to offer the bonds to small businesses that might not uh, meet the criteria for other sureties. So the surety bonds are requested, uh, surety partners with the businesses, the SBA provides the grant, the, the guarantee, and then the small businesses then are able to benefit from it. And again, to find out more, go to the SBA's website and click on surety bonds under access to capital. Next slide, please. Disaster relief. When we're talking about disaster relief, I know people are like, well, I've heard all about this all during the pandemic. Well, more specifically, we're not talking about the pandemic disaster relief. We're talking about if you have been declared uh, a disaster where there's been a national uh, emergency. So like a hurricane, tornado, uh, earthquake, uh, fire. So if you have suffered substantial economic injury and you are one of the following type of businesses, located in a declared disaster area where you can click on that to, to hear, see more details, you may be eligible for relief. And so if you're a small business, small agricultural cooperative, uh, and then most private nonprofit organizations, uh, you can use the proceeds for working capital and normal expenses. Uh, so an example would be like continuation of healthcare benefits, the rent that you would need to be paid uh, as your business is going through this un unfortunate situation, utilities, uh, fixed debt payments. Uh, and how you would apply would just go to the online application uh, and you would just, the SBA will send an inspector to estimate the cost of damage. Once your application is completed and submitted, uh, you would sign and date at IRS form 4506T with your application, give a permission for the IRS to provide the SBA with your tax return information, and it will be processed from there. Uh, and to find out more, just go to, again, the SBA's website, Access to Capital, Disaster Relief Program, and you can find out all the details there as well. Next slide, please. Medicaid renewals. 
Uh, so everyone with Medicaid must renew their coverage this year if you haven't done so yet. You could do this by one of two things. One, updating your contact information with your state Medicaid or CHIP agency, not to be confused with CHIPS uh, and Science Act, um, so completely different CHIP. Uh, and responding to the Medicaid CHIP renewal form would arise to keep your coverage. And you know, if you're a parent with someone who is uh, in need of a renewal, you should respond even if you don't think you're eligible your, could, your children could still be eligible. Uh, and considering other coverage options, if you're no longer eligible for Medicaid or CHIP, check if you can get coverage through your employer, through the ACA, also known as the Affordable Care Act Marketplace at healthcare.gov or through Medicare. Next slide. Um, and actually we are going to bring this to an end. This is more about the CHIP program. Um, and there's quite a few slides about this, but what we wanna make sure is that you get a copy of this um, so that you're able to digest more specifically what uh, the Medicaid and CHIP program is and how you can use that for yourself. Uh, and with that, we wanna thank you all, our amazing speakers, Sol, Jake, um, Associate Administrator, Mark Madrid, uh, for being with us today uh, as we celebrate Hispanic heritage and learn more about cybersecurity uh, and the threats to our businesses. If you have any questions uh, that are SBA related, please use the email address here, answerdesk at sba.gov. And if you have any questions about a copy of this webinar, please, please, please feel free to contact us at events at publicprivatestrategies.com. Uh, and with that, we will be back in a couple of weeks for another webinar to provide you with resources to help you with your business. Uh, thank you for joining us and see you again soon. Take care.